opportunity to thank all my father for taking care of us for the week and for bringing us again to his Sabbath rest once again. And especially I want to take this opportunity to welcome all members and those who are following the proceedings from all over the world, from all the platforms that Facebook, YouTube, and then those who are on Zoom, that may you feel blessed 
that may God continue to bless you even as we sit down at his feet to listen to his men servant speak to us once again this evening. Before we proceed, I just want to request our host, uh, Beche, to give us the theme song, even as we continue with this day's program. Will you be blessed. Hello. Uh, happy yeah, Sabbath once again. Happy Sabbath once again. Happy day. Happy, happy day. Sabbath. Happy day. Uh, happy uh, Sabbath. Before we before we welcome our guest speaker, maybe we bow down and have our prayer. Let's pray. Almighty Father, Lord of Glory. We once again come before you this evening. We want to thank Father for the gift of the Sabbath rest, and one thank you for taking care of us for the week in various ways. For granted that we are alive this day, and we are not taking for granted that we give us this opportunity even to wait for your future Father to listen to your men's father and speak to us, O Lord. We want to thank you, Lord, for the blessings we received for this week, that even as we continue again, once again this evening, we want to invite your presence and blessings. May the Holy Spirit be upon us. And even at this our Lord, I want to commit to your main servant, Pastor Mulende, my father, as he prepares to speak to us, Lord, that may use him as your vessel, and that those listening all over the world, may you be with us, and may the blessing be upon us. This is a humble prayer, this hour, for this prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Uh, once again, I want to take this wonderful opportunity to humbly invite our guest speaker for the week, Pastor Paul Mulendema, who's been leading us doing this AMO week of prayer. And the theme for this week, in case you are joining us for the first time, is faithfulness to royal priesthood calling, even in times of crisis. Faithfulness to royal priesthood calling, even in times of crisis. And I want to humbly invite Pastor Mulendema to take us through the series again, May God bless you and use you according to his will. Amen. Amen. Beloved of God, happy Sabbath. I want to believe the Lord has been faithful and he's still faithful and he has allowed us to come and have fellowship with him. Beloved of God, I want to welcome you again to our night presentations. During this AMO week of prayer, it has been a blessing to interact with God's children wherever they are listening and watching this live virtual program. We thank God that he has been with us from the first day until this day. We want to continue looking at our subjects this evening. Our theme reminds us and says faithfulness to royal priesthood, calling even in times of crisis. 
even in times such as these, hard times, Jesus continues to call us. And this is a privilege, this. We've been looking at 1 Peter 2, verse 9. That has been our theme text. Yesterday, we were looking at the subject, a witness and not a defender. And we looked at Acts 1, verse 8. That says, but you yourselves shall receive power when the Holy Spirit hath come upon you, and ye shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. A witness and not a defender. God is looking for us to witness. He's not looking for us to go and defend his cause, defend the doctrines that we have learned, but he is looking for us calling us to go and witness everywhere. And so we say standing up for Jesus means being Christ-like. Standing up for Jesus Christ is being a reproduction of Christ. Galatians 2.20, that Christ must be seen in us. It is no longer us that are living, but Christ who lives in us. Standing up for Jesus means rebirth. Christ must be seen in us. What Christ did when he was here on earth, healing others, being kind to others, we are now a reproduction of Christ. Selected messages 105, paragraph 3. The character of the Christian is to be a reproduction of the character of Christ. Christ must be reproduced in us. The power that was in Christ, because we are Christ-like, because Christ is living in us, we must do greater things in our communities because we are in communion with Christ. The book, Our High Calling, page 198, paragraph 6, he calls upon his followers to trend in his footsteps, to trade in his footsteps. Of self-denial and self-sacrifice. This is why we are here, to tread in his footsteps of self-denial and sacrifice, the character and of the character of Christ. The same love, the same grace, the same unselfish benevolence seen in his life is to characterize the lives of his followers. Again, the repetition of the same theme, the reproduction of the character of Christ must be seen in the life of the Christian. Repetition is the mother of learning. And so because we are children of God that have been called out from darkness into his marvelous light, we must be, we must do as Christ did. We must live life as the way Jesus lived life here on planet Earth. Tonight, beloved, our subject matter is set your priorities right. Set your priorities right. We have different priorities as we live here down on Earth. Priorities to be a good husband, a good wife, be a good son, a good daughter. Those are 
different priorities. One to be good workmates, the best. But this evening we want to look at setting your priorities right. Our key text remains 1 Peter 2, verse 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. But you are, we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Beloved, shall we pray wherever we are? Blessed be your name, Jehovah God, for granting us and welcoming us to the Sabbath day of rest. Heavenly Father, tonight before we open scripture and read, we are not qualified Let's go to our subject matter. Let's go back to our subject matter. Slide is not moving. Our subject matter tonight is set your priorities right. Set your priorities right. An introduction to our message tonight. The Apostle Peter wrote this epistle. He is the one who wrote First Peter. He was once a fisherman, but now he is a disciple of Jesus Christ. He is witnessing the sufferings of Christ. First Peter 5, verse 1. The letter is written to Christians scattered all over the world in, in Pontius, in Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Peter is writing
Beloved of God, our network seems to be bad, but we will start again. Are you all getting me? May I just get feedback? Yes. Thank you. Okay. We're saying tonight's message is set your priorities right. Our key text has been 1 Peter 2, reading verse 9. And 1 Peter 2, verse 9 says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Okay. The Apostle Peter wrote this epistle. He was once a fisherman, but now he is a disciple of Jesus. He is witnessing the sufferings of Christ. The letter was written to uh, the Christians that were scattered in Asia, in Bithynia, in Cappadocia, and the other parts. He probably, during the Nairo's reign, the theme of First Peter provides evidence to gentle persecution. The purpose of the first epistle to encourage his leaders or readers to endure suffering in persecution by giving themselves entirely to God. These epistles to encourage everyone, even though they are in terms, uh, situations that are not good, but they should hold on to Christ that they have come to know. Peter wrote to believers under the pressure from persecution. Scattered as aliens in a pagan world, it would have been easy for them to lose sight of their priorities as God's chosen people. But these children of God hung on to God, even when situations were difficult. This pressure could have brought division between the Jewish and Gentile members of the church leading the church to split. And so Peter is writing to encourage everyone. Peter wants them to see their priorities clear so that they could fulfill the purpose to which God had called them. Peter closes the first section of this letter by showing, uh, by showing them that salvation must be lead by being built up upon Christ in Christian community with witness to a dying world. God's people must keep focus on God. That is the main answer that Peter is writing to encourage every believer that God's people must keep focus on God. Build together as his people and proclaim his excellencies to others, that they must remain with one mind, the mind of Christ, even as they face uh, challenges in this world. This sums up the great commandment, the love for God and love for humanity, loving your neighbor, and the great commission that is to win and disciple the lost. This helps us to keep focus when pressure builds, builds up. As children of God, we must set our priorities right. Even when we are in the world of crisis, we must keep focus. We must remember 
to love God and our neighbors. And loving God and our neighbors, meaning going and bearing fruit. Loving God and our neighbors, meaning we need to make disciples. We need to win souls. We need to show them Christ and make disciples. This is the business of us. Set your priorities right. How do we set our priorities? How do we set our priorities right amidst crisis? Believers of God, setting our priorities. How do we set them? Number one, God's people must keep God central. That is the first thing. God must be first in our lives. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these things shall be added unto you. To keep our priorities right, number one, God's people must keep God central. Our relationship to God must be at the center of all. Everything that we do, God must be at the center, both individually or corporately. If God is not central, we are missing the mark, and missing the mark is sin. Our heavenly citizenship must come first before our Kenyan, American, or Zambian citizenship. God must be number one. Matters of tribe and other things must come secondary. I am first a child of God. Then secondly, then my tribe comes, my uh, nationality comes. We must keep, of, keep focus on God. God must be central in everything we do. God must be number one. As we spend our funds, our finances, God must be number one. As we interact with others, God must be first. As we preach to others, God must be first. That is very much imperative. If our devotion for God is lacking, we are just playing church like the church at Ephesus. There is hunger for genuine Christianity. We must not play church. We must be the church that is moving forward. We must be the church that sets its priorities right. And setting our priorities right, we are saying we must put God first. Revelation 2. Verse 1 to 7. To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks among the seven candlesticks. God is saying, I know your works, your toil and your uh, patient uh, endurance, and how you cannot bear those who are evil. He is speaking to us today that he knows our works, that we are, are patiently enduring, even in times of crisis. That how we cannot bear those who are evil, but we test them, those that call themselves apostles and are not. We are keen at doing this and have found them to be false. I know you are enduring patiently and bearing up for my name's sake, and you have not grown weary. God knows us. He knows the endeavors that we are putting forth so that we should do his will. But there's something wrong with us. But I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. God is saying, remember, therefore, where you have fallen, 
Repent and do the works you did at first. Prerequisite number one, remember where you have fallen. Repent and do the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Brothers and sisters, we have lost our first love. We are saying for us to keep our priorities right. Number one, God must be kept central of everything that we do. He must be number one. But we have lost God. We have gone ahead in matters of technology, matters of fashion. We have put God aside. God is saying, remember where you have fallen. Repent, lest I come and remove you from that lampstick. Let us come back to God. In those days when we first met Jesus Christ, we were faithful in reading his word. We were faithful when we got baptized in matters of going, of returning a faithful tithe and offering. We were faithful in those days when we just got baptized. Those days when we met Jesus, our dressing was decent. But nowadays, the Christians of today, we are not modest even in matters of dress. We come to church to worship God in indecent clothes. Those days when we met Jesus Christ, we were faithfully communicating with him, praying every time. When things are difficult, we would kneel down and pray. Nowadays, it is a different story. Those days when we first met Jesus, our first love, we were faithful in taking care of our family members. We have lost our first love. Where is that love, brothers and sisters, that reconnects us to make us commune with Jesus Christ? Love for Christ must be central. Peter mentions two ways to do this. When number one, we must keep God central by continually coming to Christ and building upon him. First Peter 2 verse 4, so as you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but chosen and precious in God's sight. For us to continue to, to keep God central in our lives, coming to Christ and building upon him. Come to him, for he is the living stone of crisis. Not everybody will accept Jesus Christ. But we must come to this living stone, rejected by man, but chosen and precious in God's sight. While others are refusing, let us continue to go and help them, to go and show them the way. Because Jesus Christ was rejected, men will also reject us. We, the chosen of God. So let us not feel ashamed. Each time we are rejected, that must give us the energy to return and do God's work. And so for us uh, to have the love of Christ, we must keep central these two points. Jesus must be with us. Jesus Christ, we must build everything on him. We must come to Christ repeatedly and build our lives on him. Peter calls him a living stone. 
Jesus is the living stone. And so we must continue building on him. Jesus is a solid foundation on which to build our lives. You want prosperity in life, build upon Christ. Do not build on money or the finances of this world. Build yourself on Christ and you will have everything. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these things. You are looking for a husband, for a wife, seek God first. You are looking for children, seek God first. You are looking for employment, seek God first. That is our foundation upon which our lives must be built. This is very much imperative. He is the cornerstone of the church. Christ is the cornerstone of the church. If the change is breaking, it means Christ the cornerstone has been replaced with other departmental activities. Instead of us moving forward with Christ, we have brought in the change of God other activities. And because of this, the change is divided. We are becoming tribal in, in, in matters of fellowship. Or because Christ the cornerstone is not there. What does Isaiah say? Isaiah 28, reading verse 16. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I am laying a stone in Zion. An approved stone set in place as a the one who maintains his faith will not panic. Isaiah is saying, God through Isaiah says, therefore this is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I am laying a stone in Zion, an appointed stone set in place as a precious cornerstone for the foundation. The one who maintains his faith will not panic. Christ is the cornerstone. When we put Christ as the cornerstone in our business, our businesses will prosper. When we put God as the cornerstone in our congregations, our congregations will prosper because Christ is the cornerstone. We keep God central by offering spiritual sacrifices to him through Christ. How can we keep God central in our lives? By offering spiritual sacrifices to him through Jesus Christ. As we come to Christ, we also are living stones that are used in uh, the building house for a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. To keep God central, we need to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice. You yourselves, as living stones are built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood and to offer spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to God through Christ. To keep God central, we as members of the church, we as Adventist men, we are part of the building. Because we are part of the building, we must do as Christ did. We must fix ourselves the way Christ has fixed himself to the building as the cornerstone. We must be in order. 
Romans 12 verse 1. Therefore I exhort you, brothers and sisters, by the sacrifices of God, to present your bodies as a sacrifice, alive, holy, and pleasing to God, which is your reasonable savings. To offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is our responsibility. This is our reasonable service for us to keep God central in our lives. We must offer ourselves. We must present our bodies as a living sacrifice that God may use us, that we may be good vessels that God will use to reach others. That means we must be vessels that are modest, vessels that are holy and pleasing to God. Let us be modest in how we dress or how we adorn ourselves. Let us be modest because we are a peculiar people, a distinct people, different from the rest. Modest, holy, and pleasing to God. Brethren, what's holy and pleasing to God about this? Indecent dressing in the church of God. These things continue to be, we continue to see these things right in the church of God. What is pleasing, what is holy about indecent dressing in church? Not only, uh, this does not only concern women, but men as well. What is holy and pleasing to God about sagging? Busy putting on pants as though they are loaded with stones inside. What's holy about this? What's pleasing to God about this? For us to keep God central in our lives, we must be living sacrifices, holy and presentable. How do we set our priorities right amid this crisis? We must be built together as his people. As the people of God, we must be built together. We must love one another. We receive power. When the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you will be my witnesses, beginning Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. So everything begins at home. There must be love in the homes we come from. And so there will be love at church. And so there will be love in the community. And so there will be love in the community, in the nation. During premarital wedding counseling sessions, I usually explain that marriage is like a triangle with God at the apex and partners and the partners at the other two points. As the partners, as the partners each grow closer to God, they grow closer to one another. What is true in marriage is also true in the local church. The more we put or we, the more we focus on God, the more God is the focal point, the more we draw closer to him and the more we come closer to one another. God brings us together. For us to set our priorities right, even amid this crisis, we must be a building that is knit, set up together. There must be unity. God's people must love one another. When we love one another, when we are in one accord, then we will go with the mind of Christ, the mind 
of not being defenders, but witnesses. A mind of calling others, bringing them to God. Peter wants his readers to see that Christianity is not an individualistic thing where we each have a relationship with God, but each one for himself or herself. We say, God for us all, each one for himself. When we love one another, we do things as the first church, praying together, doing things together. For this reason, even the Holy Spirit outpoured upon them and they went out to witness and they came back and did the same. We are being built together into a spiritual house or temple in the Lord. This truth is expressed. This truth is especially important in our increasingly fragmented mobile personal society where people are separated. When things are wrong, you don't want to go and see or visit your neighbor. You want to use a phone when they are just meters away from you. You wrong your father, your mother, you want to text him. Daddy, this is what I've done. Uh, mommy, I've wronged you, I'm sorry on form. We need to come together because we are God's building. Come together and confess. That is very imperative. The church isn't a building. The church is God's people. Because we are God's people, we must do things together. We must pray together. We must sing together. We must witness together. It's not a building. It's the people of God. There must be love amongst us. It is not good not to share the same seat because you will know your neighbor. Your neighbor is not Tonga or Bemba. We must come together in church. Whether our tribes are different, that is not imperative. What is important is are you a child of God? That's very important. Ministry is Christ flopping over from you to me and from me to you. That's ministry. How do we set our priorities right amid this crisis? We must proclaim the excellencies of God to others. God has called us out of the world as his people so that we can go back into the world and proclaim the excellencies of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. God is looking for a sinner, that the sinner should be touched by God, that a sinner should go to another sinner and show that brother, that sister the way. First Corinthians 1, verse 23. But we preach about a crucified Christ, a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. 
Let us go out there and witness, even though others are not ready to hear this message, even though others will reject this. But this is the power that we have. We must go and preach, proclaim, witness to everybody. Jesus, who is crucified, whether he is a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles, in this sense, foolishness to the educated, we must continue to go out there and stand on the promises of Christ. This is very much imperative. This is our mission, to help our brothers, our sisters, to proclaim. We must keep focus on God. How do we keep our priorities right? We must keep focus on God. We must love one another. And then we must go and witness to everyone. This is what God wants us to do, to share the good news to everyone that is around us. Remember, set your priorities right. Let God be number one in your life. Everything that you do, God is looking for one who will set his priorities right, for one who will seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. God is looking for a faithful steward. He is looking for you. He is looking for me. Once we are faithful, once we put our priorities right, God is able to use us much more. Happy Sabbath. Beloved, and may God bless us all as we make it our deliberate cause to set or to put our priorities right. May God bless you all for listening to these messages as we share uh, with God's word. God bless you all and may you continue to bless others by going out there and sharing this good news to everyone. Shall we pray? Shall we pray? Thank you, our Heavenly Father, for being with us at this time, for helping us to set our priorities right. We want to pray and ask that, Father, may you ignite the spirit of Christ in us that we should go out there and proclaim the good news to our friends. As we have begun the Sabbath worship, continue to be with us as we commune with one another and with you. May the blessings of heaven rest upon us to give us strength even amidst these difficult times. Be with us and bless everyone who is listening from everywhere around this globe. May you reach them and meet them at their points of need. This is our prayer and asking in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Brother, Brother Willis, I think you can. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Beche. Allow me to greet us all once again this evening. And uh, we want to thank God that for the opportunity that you have given us, and especially this week that we had the Adventist Men Ministries Week. And so uh, during this week, we want to thank uh, God for the ministry of uh, our pastor, Pastor Paul Mulendema, who uh, got the opportunity to minister to us uh, this particular week. And therefore, Pastor, we just want to say thank you so much that you heed to the, our invitation uh, and the uh, nature of the presentation that you give us, the nature of the slides that you 
Meg tells us that you are well prepared for this particular week and for this particular ministry. And we want to thank you so much that uh, for sure it has been a blessing. I know that you are one speaker who uh, just uh, 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 preaches the word by teaching it. A very soft spoken man. And we want to thank you that uh, you got time for us and also thank you for uh, uh, thank your family for the sake of allowing you to uh, be with us this uh, one hour every from Wednesday through this Friday. So without much ado, allow me to invite our pastor to also say something, our church pastor, Pastor Kiwi Karibu San. Asante, Asante Sana, uh, Willis. Thank you so much, all of us, for finding time, especially these holy hours of Sabbath. Having had a busy week and also um, busy schedule. We want to thank God that truly he has given us opportunity to come together and worship him and have this Vespers worship. May the good Lord continue blessing us. I know he has a lot for us in, this, in, his, in his heavenly stores. And uh, the moment we get tuned, not only to our platform, but even to heaven, the blessings will be with us. Pastor Paul, wherever you are and your family, may the good Lord continue blessing you for finding time for our church. Thank Asante you so much. Mustangaj. Asante Sana. Thank you so much, Willis, for organizing this with the AMO department. Hoping tomorrow we'll be also having some more blessings uh, from our pastor, and I do welcome all of us. Pastor Vincent will be coming to us from Kisumu, and uh, I know he has a lot also for us. Thank you so much. Back to you, Willis. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Pastor, for those welcoming words, and thank you so much, uh, Pastor Paul Mlendema, for the powerful message. So without much ado, allow me to uh, uh, I request uh, our brother Vincent, brother Vincent, uh, I'm again to kindly close this with a heart of prayer. Thank you. If you are there, if you can listen to, if you can hear us. Brother Vincent, Mugen. Thank you. Let's pray. Our dear and heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, this evening. Father, we want to thank you because you've been faithful to us. And indeed, Lord, we have seen your hand this um, week, Lord. We want to thank you, Lord, because of Brother Mlendema, because, Pastor, you have enabled Pastor to be with us since Wednesday till this Friday. He has really delivered good messages that you prepared. And, Lord, we have been blessed. We want to pray, Lord, that the messages that we've received from our pastor, that they may dwell in us and the Lord that we may use them so that they may enrich in our spiritual life. We want to thank Lord you for our pastor and uh, the organizers, the men's ministry who organized this program. We want to thank you, Lord. As we enter into the Sabbath, we want to thank you. And Lord, we want to say that lead us into tomorrow. And as we worship tomorrow's Sabbath, Lord, we want to believe that you're going to be with us. Thank you, Lord, and do what your will is upon our lives. For this we pray, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.